In this video I'm going to go through the procedure to use the flash print software to set up for a 3D print. The first thing you do when you load the software is you must set the machine to the Creator Pro. You may be met with this screen, just close it as you can't make any changes anyway. So we'll maximise the screen and this is ready to go but before we put our part into the software we need to make some changes in the inventor program. So I've opened my inventor dice, it's completed, all the part, all the extrusion sorry are renamed in the browser down the side here and we need to save this as a particular format so you must go to file save copy as and I'll show you the difference between the two. If you go to the normal save as you only have two options but when you go to save a copy as you all of a sudden have a lot more options. We are going to use STL file because that is the type of file that will be read by a 3D printer. Now the next important step is to go into this options tab here and then change from centimetres to millimetres. Now if you use the same computer the next time you 3D print I have found that this setting stays the same. That's in previous versions of the software. Um, I'm assuming it will be the same for you. So you say OK and that sets that option there. Save that to your home drive or your H drive. I'm not going to do that because I've already saved one as a demo. So if I go back to my software, I'm going to check that my Creator Pro down the bottom left hand side here is definitely selected. If not, click on this little icon, select machine type and change it to Creator Pro. Next you need to load your STL file. You can do that by either going to File, Load File or you can select model file, navigate and load your STL file. So here's my dice, it's a 16 by 16 by 16 square. I'm going to move that and by doing this you can see I'm selecting the whole table or the whole print area. So what you have to do is select then come over to the option here which is move. So I can just drag that out of the way. Clicking on it again closes the menu. I'm going to load another file just to show the difference between one that I saved correctly as millimetres and one that I saved incorrectly as centimetres. So if I click on that again, click on the move, I should be able to move that. If I roll my mouse we can zoom in and you can very clearly see that the scale of this one is very very small not satisfactory for printing in fact. So if we have a quick check at some of the menu options, in the previous software these menu options were on the left hand side. In this one if you hover over them it gives you the name of each, so view allows you to change the location that you're looking at your model from. So you want to check what's on the bottom view, so that's a good improvement on the previous software, but in here there is no reset view to take it back to that isometric view. So if we come over here to the view one, perspective doesn't seem to change it, but home view does. So home view takes us back to that original view and what we're wishing to look at. Now the rotate option is not overly necessary for our dice here, however I'm going to rotate it around so that the one dot is on the bottom. So I want to check if I'm going in that direction which is correct. So I'll bring it back to zero and then I'll hit plus. That takes it one, two, that takes it twice. Now if I wanted to check that I could go to the bottom view and see that my number one is actually the view that I'm, I've got on the bottom. And for 3D printing that might be a little bit better. So the next option is scale, so you can change the scale and you can change from inches to millimetres. Cut is something we won't use too often. 
duplicate is something you might use if you were 3D printing four wheels, for example. You would import one part and then duplicate it three other times. And we don't need to use too many more of these functions. For the dice, we don't need to do supports. But if you had a part of a 3D print that was up off the table, you need to use supports in order to lift up the part because the printer cannot print in air. And in the previous versions, I've just used automatic supports and you need to save the file with the supports on it but we don't need to look at that today too much so to start the printing you you should be met with this file here so you need to come down to um, expert mode to open up the other options but beforehand we'll make sure that you've got PLA set correctly not ABS here again it pays to check that you've got creator pro and then I'm going to open expert mode in the expert mode, it allows me to change the right and left extruder and the platform temperature. And I want you to set them to these settings. So the material we're printing from prefers 225 as um, the temperature to be extruded and the platform temperature or the table to be 70 degrees. So a heated bed gives us a better print. Then you select the general tab and I want you to change the base print speed and the travel speed to 120. We want them to be the same so the printer head moves at a constant speed and doesn't stop and jolt between print and travel speed. And then I would recommend that you save the configuration and then we'll hit slice which is the same as print in the old mode. Now you might have noticed down the bottom of the screen there was a little green um, line that appeared that was the, the printing time. And on the old version, it used to tell us the time and the amount, but that might happen next when we do the next bit. So now we go local save. Before we do that, notice that the file type is an FPP and it's unnamed. So when I go to local save and I save to local and you navigate to your H drive, it now gives you the option of putting in the name and the file type changes to .x3g, which is the type of file that the Creator Pro uses. So if you get to the end of this and your file isn't an X3g, our printer will not read it. And the reason that sometimes happens is people forget to change the machine type. So you save that to your H drive. I won't do that because I already have. And then what we do is we transfer that file either by uploading it to Daymap or if you're doing an individual print, you transfer it across onto an SD card via the SD card reader and you put the SD card into the machine and print from the machine. So I hope that helps you use the new software setting up so that you can easily and accurately print your 3D print.